okay so today we are going to discuss about uh, tasks okay so we use tasks for scheduling in uh, snowflake we'll see how we schedule the sql queries or stored procedures by using tasks okay in snowflake so the agenda for today is what is a task and how we create a task and how we alter a task how we can use cron for scheduling the queries how we use uh, dags of tasks and how we can see task history and how we troubleshoot task if it is uh, uh, not working as expected okay so if you see any traditional databases you have sql queries and stored procedures but do you have any way to schedule them like i have a stored procedure which is loading all my tables every day okay but when i mentioned every day do you have some functionality to run that query every day without using any third party scheduling tools is there any way in traditional databases no but in a snowflake cloud data warehouse so we have a way uh, we we can easily schedule our sql queries or stored procedures by using tasks okay so we can schedule as i said we can schedule sql queries and stored procedures and the task can be combined with the streams for implementing the continuous change data captures okay so tomorrow we are going to discuss about streams and uh, we'll discuss more about this point tomorrow okay so we can combine tasks and streams for continuous data ingestion okay and continuously changing uh, capturing the changes and applying the applying at the target level tables okay we can maintain a dag of tasks to keep the dependencies between tasks okay dag is nothing but a directed acyclic graph we'll discuss in detail in the next slides but a dag is a direct directed acyclic graph that means suppose i have two tasks okay task 1 and task 2 uh, and my task 2 should run once uh, the successful completion of uh, task 1 how can we mention that okay so we have a uh, <clears throat> feature called dependencies okay so we can easily mention dependencies between the multiple tasks okay so whenever you mention the dependencies between or among the tasks what will happen a graph will a graph will come right we'll see that how the graphs will be okay so that graph we call as directed acyclic graph okay by using these dags we can easily maintain the dependencies between multiple tasks okay tasks require compute resources to execute sql code definitely whenever you are putting some sql query or stored procedure inside the task we need compute resources that means we need to mention virtual warehouse okay but uh, uh, there is a flexible way in snowflake we can choose either of uh, snowflake managed compute resources or user managed so <clears throat> recently only they introduced the snowflake managed compute resources earlier we were using only user managed that means whenever we are defining a task okay we are scheduling a task we have to mention a warehouse name along with that suppose we have our warehouses like compute warehouse my own warehouse right so whenever we are defining a task we have to mention that warehouse name also but recently snowflake introduced so even though we don't mention the warehouse name so it will consume the snowflake credits okay snowflake managed compute resources it will uh, utilize okay so it's not not a mandatory to mention the warehouse name okay so this is uh, about a task and how to create a task by using a create task command we can easily create the task okay and if you see the syntax uh, it is simply like create or replace a task task name we have to provide a task name and we have to provide a warehouse now this is not a mandatory okay if you don't mention the warehouse it will take the snowflake uh, compute resources okay but if we want to use only our uh, virtual warehouses then we can we can mention like this warehouse equals to our warehouse name and schedule so i told right task we will be using for scheduling our queries or stored procedures so we have to mention the scheduling requirement like every day or every week or every one hour whatever 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 be our requirement scheduling requirement we can mention here so we can specify the time or we can mention a cron command so what is cron we'll see in the next slides okay 
So schedule, we can just uh, simply mention the time or we can put some cron entry here. And suppose if I want to mention dependencies, okay, if I want to create uh, between or among the tasks, okay, I have to use this uh, task dependency like after. Suppose I have a task a task name, right? So this will run after dependent task name, okay? Once the dependent task name is completed, then the task name will be triggered, okay? And as SQL statement, okay? So we have to put like this, create or replace task name, mention the warehouse name, mention the scheduling requirement. And if there are any dependencies, this is not mandatory property, okay? If there, if you need to, if you want to specify dependencies, then only you can keep, otherwise you can ignore this. Uh, this is optional property <clears throat> as SQL statement. So SQL statement can be a query, okay? It can be any type of query, uh, DDL, DML, okay? Or it can be a stored procedure also, uh, okay? This is how we create a task in Snowflake. Suppose I have created a task and in future I realized I need to modify something in the task. So by using alter task command, we can easily modify our task. Like uh, suppose if I want to add or remove dependency, so whenever first time I'm creating my task, I did not uh, specify the dependencies, okay? Later, if I want to add or remove the dependencies, I can use alter task command. Uh, suppose if I want to change the warehouse name, okay? I can use alter task command. If I want to change the schedule, suppose uh, initially I schedule it run every day, but later I, I realized like I want to run it for every hour then we can use alter task command to reschedule it for every one hour. And uh, suppose if I want to modify the SQL statement inside the task, okay? Uh, so we can do by using task, okay? Alter task command. And we can add, remove, or modify the comments. So if there is any comment we have specified for the task, we can add new, ta we can add new comments, we can remove the existing comments, we can modify the existing comments, okay? And by using alter task, we have to, we can suspend our resume task. Okay, so this is very important: suspending and resuming. So whenever you create a task, by default it will be in the suspended state. So if you want to start running it, you have to resume it. Okay, so how by using alter command we can resume the task. Okay, so if we resume the task, then only it will start running as per the schedule. Okay. So you can see some examples here, how we alter a task. Alter task, task name, add after. Suppose if I want to <clears throat> add a dependency, I can simply add after task employee. So once the task employee is completed, then the task department will be triggered. If I want to remove the same dependency, okay? So I can simply put alter task, task name, remove after, okay? This dependency I'm removing here. And if I want to modify my schedule, Okay, alter task employee set, we use set, set schedule equals to five minutes. Earlier it was one minute, I'm changing it to five minutes. Okay, how, how you can change? By using set schedule equals to. And suppose if I want to resume or suspend my um, task, this is the command, alter task, task name, resume or suspend. So remember this, whenever you create a task, by default it will be in suspend state. So if you want to start running the task, first time you have to execute a resume command. Alter task, task name, resume. <clears throat> so you can see some sample task here, okay? Suppose I have a query, I, I have a insert query, okay? This is my insert query, and I want to run it for every 10 minutes. So how can I uh, create my task? So this is how we can create. Create or replace task, okay? I'm giving name called customer insert for the task name as, as a task name. And I'm mentioning warehouse equals to compute warehouse, use this warehouse schedule. So I want to run this query for every 10 minutes, right? If you see the requirement is to run for every 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes as the query, whatever we want to run for every 10 minutes, I'm mentioning over here. Okay, so this is just by using the time. So if we want to schedule by using CRAN, okay? Suppose uh, I want to run at particular time every day, okay? So we cannot um, uh, specify that by using just time, right? In that case, we have to use some CRAN entry, okay? So how we can do the same, create or replace task, task name, 
we have to mention a warehouse name. So here I'm using my own warehouse and schedule equals to, so this is the syntax for cron. We have to say using cron and this is a cron format. We'll discuss what is the cron format in the next slide, okay? So if I want to run any task every day at 9.30, uh, this is the format we have to specify for cron, okay? And uh, so I want to execute the stored procedure every day at 9.30. Okay, so I'm simply calling this stored procedure inside my task. Call this procedure name. Okay, call and procedure name. <clears throat> so these are some sample tasks. Now this is very important. Okay, using cron. This is not only useful in Snowflake, it is useful everywhere. Okay, in Unix, okay, in uh, Python, in uh, Airflow, everywhere. If you want to schedule something, okay, uh, on a specific format. So we use cron only. So just try to understand this, how it works, okay? If you have some idea already, then good. Otherwise you try to understand. So every cron contains five stars, okay? And there'll be a meaning for each of the star. If you see the first star, okay? It denotes the minutes, okay? It can be anything like zero to 59, from zero to 59, okay? So this star value can be anything between zero to 59. That means a minute can be zero or 59, right? So this is the value. And second star, okay? It denotes the hours, okay? So hours can be zero to 23, okay? So it's a 24 hour format. So the hour number can be anything zero to 23. And third star is day of the month, right? So how many days can be in a month? Maximum 31. So there can be 28, 29, 30, 31, right? So we are not sure which is the last day. That's why we have a uh, feature called L we can mention. So if I want to execute some uh, uh, query and the last day of the month, so you don't know which is the last day, right? 30, 31st, you don't know. You cannot specify by using number. So in that case, you can simply put L, okay? So this is the third star is day of the month. Fourth star is month number okay so it can be anything between 1 to 12 so you can uh, specify the number or you can specify th first three characters of the month so in this star place you can specify a month number 1 to 12 or you can specify first three characters of the month name both will work okay suppose i have a requirement i want to run on april 1st every year i want to run some task on april 1st okay so in that case for, for april the month number is 4 so here I just put four, okay? <clears throat> and the last star denotes the day of the week, okay? Suppose uh, there in real time, there will be a requirement. So every Friday I want to run, every Monday I want to run some query. So in that case, how can we specify the month, okay? Uh, how can we specify that day, specific day, Sunday or Monday? So this last star denotes that uh, day of the week. So it starts from zero to six. We can uh, specify in number, like zero or zero to six, or we can specify first three characters of the day, okay? Suppose uh, zero is Sunday, okay, six is Saturday, remember this. Uh, but if you want to like mention the last day of the week, that means Saturday, then you can simply put L. Instead of Saturday, you can use L also, okay? So this is the day of the week. It starts from zero, that is Sunday, and it ends with the six, that is Saturday. You can mention anything, uh, a number or first three characters of the day. So by using this five stars, now you can schedule any type of job, any type of requirement you can mention by using these five stars. Okay, that is the advantage of CRAN. Suppose I have a requirement. So here I have given some examples. Okay, we'll go through some other examples while doing the lab. Okay, suppose I have to run, <clears throat> I have to run this for every minute. Okay, I want to run some of the SQL query for every minute. So how can you specify? So this is the syntax. Whenever you say every minute, that means it should run on all the minutes, all hours, all days, okay, all uh, months and uh, all days of the week, I want to run. So you can simply put all stars, okay? I can, simply I can put all stars. That means the task will run every minute. Okay, star means every time, every day, every hour, uh, or every month, or every day of the week. 
you can say every star means every okay suppose i have a particular requirement i want to run uh, a sql query every night at 2 am okay and the time zone is utc okay so how can we do so now if you see uh, 2 am means the minutes will be zero and hours will be two and i want to run every every day right so there, there there is no specific day of the month there is no specific month there is no specific day of the week so i am simply mentioning all this as stars okay and 2 am i want to schedule that's why i have given 0 2 and the third one so if you see the third example i want to run my query uh, two times a day okay at 5 am and 5 pm okay so how can i run so if there are two or three or multiple requirements you can specify by using comma so i want to run at 5 am and 5 pm 5 pm is nothing but 12 plus 5 17 in 24 hours format so i am giving just 0 5 comma 17 i want to run twice this one and every day every month and every day of the week i want to run so i am just putting <coughs> stars here okay and if you see the last example uh, in june on the last day of the month at 2 30 am okay in june only i want to run this and i want to run the last day of the month at 2 30. so 2 30 we can simply specify 30 minutes two hours and i i told right whenever uh, we want to last run last day of the month i can simply specify l and i want to run particularly on the june month so june for june the month number is six and I, it can be any day, Sunday or Monday or Saturday or Friday, it can be anything, right? So I'm just uh, simply giving star, okay? So this is my uh, cron entry for this requirement. So based on your requirement, you have to form your uh, cron entry. So we call this as cron entry or cron command, okay? So we have to fill the values for five stars. And if, the, if whenever it says every, then you can simply put star. And if we have specific requirement, then we have to put numbers or characters here. Okay. So this is how we use cron. We use crons and we'll see this in lab practice today. <clears throat> and uh, when it comes to DAG of task, task, okay. So this is a DAG looks like. DAG is nothing but it, it's a directed acyclic graph, okay. We use DAGs in Snowflake to maintain dependencies between or among the tasks, okay? A root task is followed by chain task. So here, A is the root task. That means the first task. And these are the child tasks. So suppose my requirement is I want to run uh, task B and task C after the successful completion of task A. So this is how I can mention the dependencies, okay? After A is completed, run B and C. And my task D should run once the uh, task B and C is successfully completed. So I'm mentioning like this, okay? So when both of these completed, then only task D will be triggered. And now if you see, it is a graph, right? Directed acyclic graph, okay? There can be, uh, it can be a closed graph. It can be an opened graph. It can be anything, okay? So, but it's a directed acyclic graph. Why it is saying directed? Because we are specifying the directions. Once this is completed, then run this one. That means we are specifying a direction, the dependency direction. Okay, that's why we call this as directed acyclic graphs. Okay, this is very good concept. Actually, you, <clears throat> you, you can use this concept anywhere. So in Airflow also, Airflow is a scheduling tool as well as a, uh, ETL tool you can use. Okay, there also we have uh, this DAX concept for scheduling the jobs, ETL jobs. Okay, so the, the that is a DAG, and a root task has followed root task followed by child task. So this is the root task and followed by the child task. And uh, so whenever we want to schedule all these tasks, okay, we can just schedule the root task. Okay, just schedule this one and no need to schedule all this. Just put the dependencies. Once the root task root task A is completed, then automatically they will be triggered. So no need to mention the schedule requirement for this. So if they are under a graph, so whenever the root task is completed, they will be triggered based on the order. Okay. 
so this is a dag of task and let's see more how we create a dag of task so this is my requirement right uh, first i want to create a root task a then uh, uh, my task b and c task c should run and then at the end once b and c is completed my da task d should run so this is how we can mention okay so create or replace task task a okay I am uh, specifying warehouse, compute warehouse. And suppose I want to run this at uh, uh, 9.30 every day. So that's why I'm uh, scheduling, schedule using cron, okay? So using cron is a mandatory keyword and you have to specify the uh, cron entry and you can mention the time zone, UTC or uh, I, uh, IST or CST, whatever the time zone we can mention here. Based on this time zone, it will be executed, <coughs> okay? And uh, so my in the first task, I am executing SQL query one. Then, OK, how to create a task for B? So if you see, uh, it's simple. Create a task, task B, OK? Warehouse equals to compute warehouse I'm using. And simply, we have to mention after task A, OK? This is the syntax to put the dependencies after task A. That means once task A is completed, then task B will be triggered, OK? And in the task B, I'm running the SQL query two. And if you see the third task, task C, so here also it is like that. Create or replace task, task C. Warehouse equals to uh, compute warehouse I'm using. Here also I'm putting after task A. So if you see here, C is running not after B, but it is running after A only. That's why I kept like after task A as SQL query. So here I'm executing. Uh, third query <clears throat> and if you see the task D it is little different so whenever there are multiple dependencies okay suppose here my task D should run once the uh, once task B and task C successfully completed right so here I cannot use this after task A okay so in the create uh, in the definition of the task I cannot uh, mention multiple uh, this thing multiple dependencies so how we, we have to create this so create or replace task, task D. Uh, just to mention the warehouse name as the SQL query. Put the SQL query. <clears throat> and later I can execute al alter commands. So I while discussing the alter command, I told you, right? So to mention or remove the dependencies, to create or remove the dependencies, so we can use uh, these alter commands. Alter task, task D, add after task B. OK, so I'm mentioning. Once this is completed, run D. And also I'm adding alter task task D, add after task C. That means once task C is completed, run D. That means, so whenever, when the task D will be executed, both the task B and task C successfully completed, then only this task will be triggered. So this is how we create the dependencies between DAGs. This is the syntax, okay? So we use, and if you observe, so in the task B, C, R, D, nowhere I mentioned the schedule because for the root task, I have mentioned the schedule. That means using cron, uh, this one, every day at 9.30. So once at 9.30, this root task will be triggered. Once this is successfully completed, completed, irrespective of time, it can be 9.31, 9.35, 9.40 or 10. Whenever this is successfully completed, this will be, these both will be parallelly triggered. And when both uh, these, two will be completed, both of them completed, then the task D will be triggered. So that's why I did not specify the schedule requirement here because I have specified my scheduling requirement for root task, okay? So this is how we maintain dependencies between or among the tasks, okay? And <clears throat> how to get the task history, suppose, okay? Uh, something is not running, some task is not running, or I want to, uh, see uh, like the queries, okay? Queries of uh, my task history. Query, I want to fetch the query ID. When the task is, uh, it will be executing in the background. If we just create the schedule, it will be executing, executing number of times based on the schedule we are giving. So I want to see the task history in a day, how many times it ran and what is the query ID associated with. So if I want to check any history details of the task, Okay, so we have a table called task history. Okay, this is present in the information schema. I told, right, information schema is a controlling schema. Whatever we are doing in the snowflake, all the things will be 
stored in the information schema okay so we have a table called uh, information schema contains so many tables one of the table is task history where all the history of the tasks will be stored okay suppose if i want to see all task history irrespective of task name and task time if i want to see all the history okay so how i can write a query this is simple select star from table okay information schema dot history and order by so if i want to see uh, the latest task okay uh, in the first then i can put order by scheduling time disc descending order okay so it's simple select star from information schema dot uh, task history order by this schedule time and descending order okay suppose if i want to see a specific task i don't want to check the history of all the tasks and i want to check only specific tasks and just i want to check last 6 hours or last 24 hours what happened so how to write a query for this it's again simple select star from table information schema dot task history okay select star from this table and i have to mention two properties here so what i mentioned specific task so we have to mention a task name task name and you, you just have to put task names in single quotes and i mentioned right in the last six hours okay so in the task history there are two fields okay schedule time range start and the schedule time range end so that means when that uh, task was started and when that was ended so it captures both the timestamps so i want to see in the last six hours so what i have to do <clears throat> So whenever when the scheduled time range starts, okay. So simply I'm adding six hours here minus six. That means I'm uh, uh, I'm reducing six hours from the current time. That means suppose uh, the time is uh, eight o'clock now, okay, and uh, I'm reducing six hours now. That means from two eight minus six. Here I'm specifying hours, right? I think you are already aware of this uh, date add and date difference you have used in your assignments, right? So date add means whenever we want to add uh, some uh, hours or some minutes or some days to the current timestamp, we can use this simply date add function. So whenever I mention negative number here, minus six, that means it will reduce the time. So here I'm reducing the time by six hours. So I want to see all the task history in the last six hours that's why i wrote a query like this and this is my task name i want to see the history of this task so this is how we can write a query to see the history of a specific task in last six hours that means how many times it was executed in last six hours and what is the status was it failed any time okay and what is the query id associated with that schedule so if i want to see all those things i can simply run this query okay and suppose i have i want to see uh, all the task history in a specified time period okay here not uh, task wise but i want to see the task history in a specified time period so last 24 hours what is the status of all my tasks if i want to check this simply i can mention select star from this uh, information schema dot task history table and i told right there are two parameters associated with the task history table uh, two columns scheduled time range start and scheduled time range end <clears throat> so i have to uh, specify the timestamp two timestamp underscore ltz and the timestamp value and again uh, this one so what is two timestamp underscore ltz okay so it is ltz means local time zone suppose my uh, snowflake uh, uh, account is created in uh, uh, what is the reason east to we have used right so the local time zone will be east eastern time zone if i am creating my this one in asia pacific okay it can be a like uh, uh, a uh, ist okay so whatever the asia time uh, time zone okay it is local to that so it will display it will use that timestamp okay so whenever we want to convert a, a particular timestamp to local time zone so we use this okay uh, two underscore timestamp underscore local time zone <clears throat> okay so he, like this i can mention the start time and end time and if i want to see uh, task history in between this start time and end time i can write a query like this select star from table information schema task history 
and i have to mention uh, the start time and end time by using like this so these are the two fields schedule time range start and schedule time range end they present in the task history they are the fields in the in the table and the task name is one of the field okay so this is how we capture the task history so we can see a specific task we can see a specific time and we can check the history of all the tasks we'll see this in uh, lab session today okay so this is how we see task history and <clears throat> the last one is how to troubleshoot your task suppose uh, you have scheduled some task okay and it is not running as per schedule or it is not running as expected so how to troubleshoot the task okay so there are four steps we have to go through all these four steps if something is not running as expected the first thing is verify the task status okay so uh, i told right whenever we create a, some task it will be by default in a suspend state but uh, uh, if it is in suspend state it, it will not be running so we have to resume it so whenever you run that command alter task task name resume then it will move to started started state okay by default it will be in suspended state and whenever we resume so it will be in started state so first of all we have to verify the task task status it is started or it is suspended if it is in suspended then just resume it okay so this is the first step we have to check and the second step check the task history and check execution state okay if it is in failed state take the query id and check the failure reason okay suppose <clears throat> uh we have uh, uh scheduled a query to run for every one hour so at uh, some particular time uh, one of the uh, one time it was failed because of some data issue whatever it will be it will be or uh, some sql query issue it was failed so after that task stopped running so we have to see the task history okay if, if there is any failed instance of that task suppose uh, uh whenever i schedule it for every 5 minutes in one hour it will be running for 12 times but it ran only 6 or 7 times after that it was not running so we can check in the task history table how many times it ran in the last one hour and what is the status of that last executed task okay if it is a failed state okay just take that query id there will be a query id associated with that uh, session task session and check the failure reason why it was uh, failed so then you can correct that sql query and you can resume this task again so this is the second step we have to follow and uh, suppose uh, here there is no issue no issue in the first step and second step okay then we have to verify the permissions granted to the task owner so task owner is nothing but whoever the role or user whoever creating the task will be the task owner <clears throat> so and uh, the and in the task we have to specify some uh, uh, fields right so uh, we have to specify some sql query but sql query, for that query uh, we have to mention the database schema and table names suppose if this owner is not having the permissions for those uh, database or schema table or the virtual warehouse okay if the owner is not having the permissions for any of this thing then uh, definitely uh, the task will not be in the running state so we have to make sure uh, all this permissions granted to the task owner then only the task will run so this is the third step we have to check okay uh, <clears throat> so the fourth step is we have to verify some conditions so we can mention some conditions okay in the task definition along with the warehouse name schedule name and the dependencies we can mention some conditions also based on the conditions we can uh, run the task or we can avoid running the task okay so there will be only one condition it's not like only one but we use only one so that is the <clears throat> system stream has data okay you ignore for this step for today tomorrow i'll explain it to you neatly because you don't know what is a stream in snowflake right so this fourth step is only whenever we are dealing with the streams okay so whenever we are dealing with streams and if the stream has no data then definitely the task will not be running because we have set a stream condition here the condition is not satisfied that means there is no data in that stream that that's why it is not running so this is the last step we can troubleshoot so first thing is we have to check the task status then we have to execute uh, we have to check the task history the execution state of the task then the third thing is verifying the permissions to the task owner 
on the database schema table and warehouses and fourth one is specific to stream when there is no data present in the stream then the task will not be running so you don't need to bother uh, even if it, if it is not running as per the schedule because the stream has no data and we set the condition so don't run when the stream has no data okay so we'll we'll see clearly this one tomorrow what what this is meant by exactly <clears throat> okay this is about tasks so i am logging into my account okay i have already prepared this lab sheet for operating on task okay so first of all we have to create some task right so i want to create all my tasks in my task schema schema okay i'm creating a schema my tasks and i will be storing all my tasks in this schema okay so before that i want to make sure i am under my own db that's why i'm executing this use database my own db and uh, if you see here there there is no schema with the my tasks name here so this is my db <coughs> and if there is uh, no my task okay so that's why i am creating this schema and now let's refresh so now you can see my task schema schema here okay and just to operate uh, uh, with the task i am creating a sample table where we will be storing uh, this uh, where we'll be adding data to this for every one minute okay so i cannot schedule like every hour or every day because we want to see the task is working properly or not that's why i will uh, schedule for every one minute and we'll see how the data will be loaded automatically for every one minute okay so for that purpose i am creating a sample table okay so create table uh, under public schema of my own db and the table name is track load time okay i want to just uh, uh, track the load time whenever the data is getting loaded to the table i want to track that time okay so here i have fields like id integer and i am setting auto increment so i forgot to explain about auto increment while creating the tables okay so auto increment is nothing but even though you you don't pass any value to this so this will be inc incremented every time okay so no need to specify any while inserting the values no need to insert any value into this field but it will be incremented by one so whenever the first entry will be made into this table uh, it will start with one and whenever you add one more row to this table so it uh, the value will be incremented by one like that it will be one two three so for all the rows uh, this value will be incremented like one two three up to uh, in okay up to the uh, range of integer okay how much range it specifies up to that this value will be increasing so that's uh, we mainly use this for surrogate keys okay so whenever i want to um, increment my key field okay by default okay without specifying any value so i can simply mention auto increment okay and uh, i have one more field name of var care type and i'm just uh, de by default that means if you don't uh, mention any name okay if you are not passing any value to this so by default janard then will be loaded into that field okay and the last one is load time okay and uh, this is a timestamp field okay i'm not giving any default value here we'll see <clears throat> so let's create this table <clears throat> okay create or create our replace table okay so this table has been created let's check no not here in the public schema so track load time so this is the table okay i just have created and now let's create a task okay so how to create a task okay create a replace task task name i am using my my own warehouse so even though here it is compute warehouse but i am using my own warehouse for scheduling this task okay and i am scheduling it for every 1 minute 
if you see here i am mentioning simply one minute okay that means this query will be running for every minute okay and uh, whatever i what i am inserting into this insert into uh, this track load time table and just i am specifying load time because i don't need to specify this one id okay it will be auto increment and uh, the name i defaulted it to janardhan so no need to mention that so simply i am putting load time and that load time is current timestamp whenever the data is getting loaded into that uh, table so i mention i am giving just uh, that timestamp current timestamp okay so this is how we can create a task okay so my task has been created now okay uh, just see the data in this table now so it is empty that means uh, no records has been loaded yet so let's see uh, why no record has loaded because uh, just now we scheduled it right it takes a minute after that after one minute also there will be no data in the table because so whenever you just simply run this to show tasks command okay it will show what are the tasks present in our uh, this one uh, snowflake account okay so i have a task with this name and it is present in the my own db and my own task schema task schema and if you see it is by default it is in suspended state just now i have created it right and it is in suspended state and what is the command inside that so this is the command inside that okay and we are not mentioning any conditions for this okay so this is how the show tasks will give the details okay and as i said it is in suspended state now we want to resume okay so how we resume okay by using this command okay later when there is a requirement i want to specify i can simply run this command i am not running now but if you have a requirement to specify okay so you can run this command and if you want to see more details about the task you can simply describe task task name okay it uh, it almost shows the same as uh, this one okay whatever we are seeing by using this show task command we can see all those things by using describe also but here it will display only uh, the task properties now because we executed this resume command right that's why it is it came to started state if you see here the state is started okay so now let's see the data in this table <clears throat> so i think it's not yet one minute that's why it is taking time so just keep uh, uh, running this <clears throat> okay it takes a minute first time so now you see one minute is completed and it has loaded one record id okay one and the name whatever we defaulted to janardhan and this is the timestamp okay so this is uh, whatever the zone we have created that is the timestamp of that zone uh, that means uh, region so we have selected east one or east to right this is the eastern time okay so after one minute there will be one more entry in this table so id will be two the name will be same janardhan and but uh, timestamp will be now it is 1950 right so 1951 uh, there will be one entry with 1951 because it will run after one minute right so like this the data will be loaded for every minute okay let's see that <clears throat> so this is how we can automate the uh, task running like we can uh, uh, run queries okay based on the requirement or we can run we can call the stored procedures based on the time requirement we have and if you see here in this table there are two records okay auto increment was incremented by one and the text defaulted to janardhan and if you see the load time stamp here so it uh, it is 52 but it is not exactly two minutes difference so if you see here it, it ran at the last uh, seconds that's why it is there is almost a 1 minute and uh, some 10 seconds gap okay so it uh, takes some time for execution also right so it's almost a 1 minute gap after 1 minute it ran and loaded the data so like that if you don't suspend this task it will be running uh, and loading the data for every 1 minute 
so suppose uh, after 60 minutes there will be 60 records okay so after one day there will be one uh, one four four zero records okay for 24 hours and 60 minutes there will be 1400 records in the table so if you don't want to do, do that you can simply suspend this task okay you can keep it as well but if you keep this your storage uh, space will be calculated right so it's your choice you can uh, either suspend this task or you can keep it okay and <clears throat> how to do by using the cron command how, how can i schedule my task by using cron command let's see okay so here i am creating a task okay create or replace task this is my task name okay. earlier i i have given my task name as uh, simply task track time okay here i am mentioning task track time 2 so this is my second task okay i am scheduling it by using cron tab so if you see this everywhere i mentioned stars that means i am scheduling my task for every 1 minute so here what i am doing i am inserting data into this table and here i am not uh, defaulting the name to janardhan okay so i am giving a specific value that is donald okay auto increment i am not specifying because anyway it will be incremented right so name i am not defaulting it i am uh, uh, specifically mentioning uh, write the name donald into the table and load time is this one so let's create a task okay with this so it will be running for every one minute and it will load the data like this every time it will load uh, like auto increment field and uh, this is uh, now uh, it will be donald and the timestamp <clears throat> let's see but we have to resume this task we have created right and we have to resume this task so that it will be active immediately okay now there are how many of there uh, there are two tasks and they will be loading the same table if you see we are loading the same table by using both the tasks okay so in the first query i am just defaulting it to janardhan and in the second query i am just putting it defaulting it to donald okay so let's see the data after some time so as of now here uh, five records loaded and if you see the sixth record loaded with donald okay so it it was loaded by the second task and uh, all the five records loaded by the first uh, task we have created so like that the data will be loading okay so this is one small example but in real time we don't like uh, put li like this okay it will be some uh, uh, useful queries based on the business requirements this is just for our for our understanding i have created small tasks okay so in general uh, it will be like big queries like uh, five lines six lines ten lines okay so like that it will be okay i hope you understood how we can uh, create a dag by using uh, some time or by using the cron command Okay, and if you want to understand more, so how you can build a cron entry. So there are some examples I have given. Suppose I want to run every day at 7 a.m. Okay, so I have to mention like this 7 0 and every that's why I mentioned all the stars. And uh, suppose if I want to run uh, every day at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. So that's why 10 10 plus 12 22. That's why I mentioned like this and uh, every month last day at 11 p.m last day 11 pm so last day means we can sp uh, simply specify l 11 pm right 11 pm means 11 plus 12 23 in the 24 hours format that's why i have given like this and every monday at 6 30 so my requirement is i want to run this task every monday at 6 30 so i'm mentioning 6 30 here and uh, every month okay and uh, so here i'm putting one so this, this the last one is day of the week okay it starts from sunday that is zero so i want to execute it on monday that means zero plus one one i'm mentioning okay and so i have a requirement like uh, first day of the month okay first day of the month only from january to march okay so every from january to march i want to run this the first day of the month okay so how can i specify january to march so the fourth one will indicate the month number right so here i can specify G 1 2 3 1 is january third is 3 is march right so 1 2 3 so if i want to run on january and march not january to march 
if i want to run on january and march i can specify 1 comma 3 okay so comma will be multiple and uh, uh, this uh, this is a range if you want to specify the range then we use this okay we use like this and i want to run it first day of the month that's why i'm mentioning here one first day of the month 7 am okay so this is how we can prepare our cron entries based on the requirements suppose <clears throat> if you don't know how to uh, you are not familiarized with the cron so how can you are how can you satisfy your uh, uh, this one requirement okay you are uh, beginner to the cron entries so there are many tools okay if you specify your requirement okay okay if you just in google if you type it uh, there will be a cron maker okay you just have to specify your requirement what is the requirement you want to okay every hour every day you have to specify this requirement then it will show you the cron entry for that the default cron entry so if you are not familiar familiarized with the cron okay you can use this uh, cron makers available in google okay so this is how we schedule by using crons and now let's see how to create dag of tasks okay suppose i have the same um, acyclic graph directed acyclic graph so i want to build a task like this i have four tasks okay i want to put dependencies between uh, among the four tasks like this okay let's see how we do in general suppose i have a requirement okay first let me create some table so i am creating one table in public schema that is customer admin okay so the fields are like customer id customer name department name and load time these are my four fields in the table customer id is in integer okay and i am auto incremented to uh, i am putting auto increment over that field and customer name uh, and i am defaulting it to john and the department name i am defaulting it to sales okay so like this i am creating a table <coughs> now okay i'll be creating some set of tasks first of all i want to create a root task so how can i create create or replace task task name so for my root task i'm uh, giving the name as task underscore customer admin okay this is my root task name task underscore customer admin and the warehouse i'll be using is my own warehouse and i'm scheduling it for every one minute okay and uh, the query is like insert into this table okay so even though there are four fields i'm specifying only one because all the other i have defaulted it one auto increment and two defaulted so the same values will be loaded every time okay so i'm building like this create or replace task task name uh, specify the warehouse specify the schedule and write the uh, insert query or whatever query you want to <clears throat> run okay so i have created this task now i want to create a child task okay so task for loading sales table so here if you see i have a uh, name called department okay that is sales department so uh, there can be a number of departments in this table okay i have a customer okay I want to uh, give only sales tables data, say, sales table, uh, sales data, okay, to that customer. So for that, I am creating a task to load a sales table, table called sales, okay. So th the task is like create or replace task. So here I am uh, specifying the task name as uh, task underscore customer sales, okay. Uh, specify the warehouse, and after I am running it after the cust admin. So once this cust admin table is uh, loaded, then I, I'll be running this task, okay? Task underscore sales. Okay, you are understanding, right? So whenever the uh, cust admin table load is completed, I want to run uh, custom sales table. So here, if you see the query is like this, okay? I'm creating a, a table every time, create or replace table, okay? In the public schema with the name customer sales. So my top table is customer admin. So I'm inserting into customer admin. Okay. Now here I am creating customer sales table as select star from this customer admin. So for the table we had created or we had inserted in the previous step. Okay. 
where department name equals to sale. So sales, okay. Suppose there are five, six departments. I want to give only sales data to this customer. Okay. So I want to create a table called customer sales and I'll grant privileges on this table to that user. Okay. So this is my requirement. So I'm creating a task for this. <clears throat> okay. So the same way I have another department called HR department. Okay. I want to sell all the HR department data to another user. That's why I'm creating one more table called customer underscore HR. And if you see here, uh, if you see, see this keenly, I am not specifying a warehouse name in the task sales. I have given specified warehouse name as my own warehouse. And if you see here, I am not specifying any warehouse here. Okay. So what it will do whenever we do not specify any warehouse name, it will consume the snowflake compute resources. Okay. So there will be a separate billing for that. Okay. For all the snowflake compute resources, there will be a separate billing. Okay. Uh, if we mention specify the warehouse, then the uh, charge will be on this virtual warehouse, whatever we are running or whatever we are mentioning here. Okay. So just uh, run this and here I'm specifying like create a table customer HR uh, as uh, select the data from customer admin where department name equals to HR. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I'm running this once the customer admin table is loaded. So here I'm specifying the dependency after this cust admin. Okay. <clears throat> so like this, I am creating one more table, uh, one more task. Okay. Task underscore customer marketing. So I have one more de department marketing and I want to load one table with the only marketing data and I want to share it with another customer who needs marketing department data. Okay. So if you see here, I'm, I'm not specifying the warehouse name as well as I'm not specifying the dependency here because I want to run this query whenever both the sales and HR loads are completed. Once sales load is completed and the HR load is completed, then only run this market, uh, uh, then only load this market table. Okay. So create or replace table uh, in the public schema with the customer underscore market as select a star from this uh, cust admin table. This is the table we are loading in the first task. Okay. Where department name equals to market. Okay. So here, if you see, I did not specify dependencies because I want to uh, specify multiple dep dependencies. And even I did not specify any warehouse. That means it will uh, use the snowflake compute resources. Let's create this. And then I'm mentioning my this one <clears throat> dependencies. So alter task, the customer market. Okay. Add after customer sales, like the same way alter task, uh, customer market, add after task underscore customer HR. Once this sales, uh, sales task and uh, HR task completed, then only run your this uh, customer market task. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> So I have created the dependencies. Okay. Now, so by default, all the, uh, this, this will be in the, uh, suspended state. Suppose if you want to see show tasks. Okay. So all of them will be in suspended state. So we have created all this customer tasks, right? So if you see here, they are the, all of them are in suspended state. So whatever we resumed, the, whatever the two tasks are in started state, they are track time and track time two we had created uh, before this, right? So now I want to resume all this uh, tasks. <clears throat> so here the requirement is first you cannot resume the uh, this one parent task. First of all, you have to resume the child task okay this is one of the limitation uh, not limitation this is for a better data loading okay so that we don't miss any data first of all okay first of all we have to resume the uh, child task then so here the child last level task is the customer market that's why i am resuming that then the sales then the hr and finally the admin 
because so if i resume this first okay what will happen and uh, uh, the data will be loaded here and if you don't resume this okay the task will not be running because we haven't uh, specified any schedule for this even though uh, we have specified the schedule requirement only in the cust admin whenever this is completed then only these will be running right that's why first of all we have to um, uh, resume the child task then the parent task okay now so i all of them should be up and running now okay so if you see the uh, state okay status is started that means all the tasks are running and everything will be running for every minute okay so let's see how the data will be present in those tables so one record loaded because we have defaulted it to john and the department name is sales okay so let's see the data in this table okay so the same data has been loaded because uh, this is sales data so records came to sales table and let's see the hr okay because uh, the hr data uh, we have only one record that with sales that's why no data loaded to this hr table and let's see this uh, market table and there is no data in the market table as well because if you see our queries so we are creating uh, sales table only with the sales records and we are creating hr only with hr records that's why uh, and uh, if you see we have ins we are inserting in the first uh, task only one record with the name john and with sales that's why a record has been loaded in the sales table okay and there are no records in the other tables okay let's see after one more minute what, what will happen okay if you see here there are two records in the main table customer admin table and if you see the same will be there in the customer sales table and there will be no data in this uh, tables market and hr because the condition is not satisfying okay now suppose after some time i realized like uh, my task definition is not correct and i want to alter okay this one alter the sql query so how to alter okay so simply the query is like alter task task name alter task task name modify as okay so whenever you want to modify the sql query inside the task so you have to specify this modify as okay and you put the new query okay so whatever the query you wanted to change just uh, specify that query so if you see here i am modifying my query as insert into uh, this table here instead of defaulting the department name i am uh, specifying market okay i am just uh, specifying market okay let's you want to put a name also we can mention what is the name field customer name <clears throat> okay i just want to don't want to default to this okay i am putting one name charles okay so this is i want to modify my task like this okay customer admin task i want to modify like this where i am loading the data like this customer name department name and load time okay customer name is charles department name is market and uh, this one is current time stamp okay so i am modifying my task like this okay so we have to suspend this then we have to alter okay that is the requirement unable to update the graph with the root task admin since the root is not suspended okay so we have to suspend the root task task okay then you can alter this one okay so this is being altered okay i'll modify this later okay 
So whenever you want to alter a task or drop a task, first of all, you have to suspend it. Okay. Then only you can alter. So after doing this, okay, I want to resume it again, right? Then only the task and the tail task will be running. Okay. So my task is re resumed now. Okay. So let's see data after some time, how it will be. Earlier, the data was loading like John sales and the current timestamp. Now the data will be like Charles market and uh, the current timestamp. Okay. So we are altering the altering our task like that to load the data. Okay. So now uh, it will take some time to load the data, right? Let's wait some time. Meanwhile, we can check the history. So how to check the history of the task? We'll see that. Okay. So if I want to check, we'll come back to this. Okay. Don't worry. Now I want to show you one more thing. So how can we check the task history? I told you, right? There is a table called uh, task history in the information schema. Okay. So there all the task history will be maintained. If I want to check that, I can simply run this query. And it displays all the details. Okay. So if you, for every task, it will show like what are, uh, there are so many entries for each and uh, for each task because for every minute it is running, right? So there will be one entry for each and every minute. So I told you, right, there are two uh, things scheduled time range start. Okay. Not here. So where are those fields? Okay, they are not fields. Okay, seems that is also metadata. Okay, so if you see here for every when when it started and when it's completed, all those times are available here scheduling time and uh, uh, was that completed or what was it scheduled or was it failed. So all the status you can see in the task history. And if you see here, what is the query? Uh, it was running. You can get it from here. Or if you want to uh, troubleshoot the task, so here you can see the query ID. So you can take this query ID, go to history, and you can check. So if if it is failed, what is the failure reason? You can check there by using this query ID. Okay. So like this, we can see the query history or, or the task history. Okay. Suppose if I want to uh, see the history only for this one tr task track time. Okay. If I want to check history for a specific task, I have to run my query like this. Select star from this uh, task history table where this task name is uh, task under underscore track time. Okay. So it will uh, now it is displaying only this task details when it ran and what is the status. Okay. So everything it is displaying. Okay. Suppose I don't want to uh, see all the entries. Okay, I want to just uh, see the top 10 entries. Okay, that means uh, in the last six hours, I want to see uh, last 10 times when it ran or what is the status of last 10 runs. I want to see, right? So I can uh, write a query like this. Select star from table, okay, from task history. Schedule time range start is, uh, I'm just, uh, as I explained already, I'm just uh, specifying minus six because I want to see last six hours history. And uh, I want to see only 10 results. That means last 10 uh, um, entries I want to check. I don't want to see all the history, but I, I want to just see last 10 results uh, when it was uh, uh, triggered, when it was loaded. And uh, uh, so what was the status? It was failed or it was uh, completed. Okay. What was the status I want to check for last 10 entries? So this is how I can write a query. Okay. So it shows only 10 entries when it was, uh, uh, when it ran. Okay, if you see here, it is uh, scheduled. The, the topmost one will be scheduled because it's not yet run. It may be running. For all the other things, you can see succeeded. That means it was completed successfully. Okay, and if I want to see the day, uh, task history in between some time period. So I have to mention like this, select star from this table. Uh, task history table. I have to mention schedule time range start and end. Okay. So like this. So it displays. Okay. So
so what are the uh, tasks running in this time period and what is the status of those tasks so i simply have to specify the scheduled time range start and time range end okay within this range it will show the history of all the tasks including the status and the query id everything so if you have any doubt what is uh, uh, this two timestamp underscore ltz so you can simply run this query it will display the time in the local time zone so for for us it's not uh, for me it's not ist the local time zone but uh, it is the uh, this thing where i have hosted my account region where i have host, hosted my uh, snowflake account eastern time okay so why i'm showing this uh, you are mentioning this here right you are converting a timestamp and you are checking the uh, this thing in some time period specific time period that's why i'm mentioning like this okay so this is how we can uh, check the task history okay so let's go back to here what ha we'll see what what is happening okay so we have altered our query right to load the market data now now let's see the admin table how the data looks like <clears throat> so earlier it was loading uh, john with sales data now if you see after some time it started loading uh, charles the market data marketing data okay so let's see the other tables how they look like <clears throat> okay so let's check the sales table data so here if you see only sales records loaded there is no hr data and there is no market data and let's see the hr data so there should be no data in this table because we, we are not loading any hr records see if there are no records in the hr table and if you see the market table it should contain only the market data okay so if you see here the record charles is loading for every one minute okay and uh, the market it, it is displaying only the market data because we have set uh, the condition like that in our task query and if you you can see here okay uh, 2014 it ran 2015 it ran 2016 27 for every minute it is loading one record okay so like this the task works in snowflake and this is how we can specify the dependencies between the tasks Thanks for watching, please subscribe to my channel.